A lot of people look at my last name and assume Bales Medical, Frank Bales started. That's not correct. My mother, who was a nurse, she started Bales Medical Company. And she started by importing and reselling very specialized catheters for treating neural embolizations. So really both of us were in engineering class together at University of Waterloo. We started in September 81. Then we had our first co-op worked on together. So we were both working at Toronto Board of Education right downtown. And that's where I think our ideas of being in business and being in business together started forming. And a doctor had moved from France to Quebec and they needed someone to buy this specialized catheter in French francs, import it, get it approved, and sell it in Canadian dollars. And he sent it to her to say, would she like to license it? And she sent it to us. We said, okay, looks kind of interesting. So we put a business plan together. So at that time, Frank quit his job and I quit my job and started doing the development, the development of the catheter. So when we started the business, the way it worked was, I like to see growth, grow, 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 grow. Chris liked to see profit. As long as we're making a profit, Chris was happy. And my mom was a very, very giving person. But if you owed her money, you better pay her. So the three of us came together in a very nice combination. Grow, but make a profit and make sure that profit comes in the door. I've been uh, very lucky to have a partner like Chris. We complement each other. I'm much more operational, engineering oriented. He's a big picture thinker, a little bit more on sales and marketing side. So our skill set naturally complement each other. We don't agree on everything, but there's an old saying, if you agree on everything, one of you is not needed. My mom was a a nurse that worked in the operating room. She had a set of ethos, a set of rules that she lived by. And what nurses do is they care for patients. And my mother at the time had put the looking after the, the bianetica, the health of the patient, top. So we make a catheter and you say, who's our customer? Is our customer the hospital? Maybe. Is our customer the doctor that buys it? Or is our customer actually the patient? That ethos came from my mother. My mother has passed away now practically five years, but that core of her belief systems, putting the patient's best interest first, I truly believe that that served us phenomenally well. The problem with the distribution business is you kind of build up a product line, then company gets sold, then you lose a product line, you build up again. We kind of got tired of that. So we said, in order to have long-term growth, we need to have our own set of products. And when you do that, one of the best things to do is have the engineers very close to the manufacturing. We made sure our engineers talked to the doctors directly. If the doctor wasn't happy, they heard it directly. And then they could come back, work on it, work with the people in production, test it out, bring it back again, and hear back from the physicians. It allowed us to innovate in a very rapid and cohesive fashion. Through the devices we've developed at Bayless Medical, we've had a long-standing history of making human impact. This is through innovating in spaces where nobody was innovating the technology prior to that and creating meaningful innovation for growth that actually changes how medicine is done in the field and provided significant value to both patients and physicians as part of this process. The left atrium is a part of the heart that maybe 15, 20 years ago was rarely ventured into by cardiologists. Anatomically, it's the most protected structure of the heart. If we're going to do a left atrial appendage occlusion, a mitral valve repair, an ablation procedure, require getting access to this inner sanctum of the heart. We develop a set of products for crossing the left heart using our energy needle or Versacross system. From a patient perspective, we're providing a safer procedure for them with lower complication rates. Also for our physicians, it's more efficient for them to use, which drives less lower exposure time for them in an operating room. The Versacross platform has really streamlined the transeptal access procedure. It's improved the precision, safety, and efficiency over prior tools, which maximizes the chances of a successful and safe procedure. The more efficient a procedure is, the less room there is for complications, which definitely improves outcomes. That got a lot of attention from physicians and grabbed very rapid market share in the United States, North America, elsewhere. One product I'm most proud of would be our Nikon and RF wire. And that catheter allows physicians around the world to treat uh, what's commonly known as blue babies. They will die in a few days unless something is done. We developed a way to open that valve, fishing a little wire up, one second of energy, opening the valve, and thereby allowing blood to go to the babies.
What happened in 2021? We were doing great. We had our first generation wire called the NRG system, and we were gaining market share, but we didn't sit on our hind legs. We developed the next generation, but the value of the technology was so strong, its impact on the patient so big that it just took off. And then the suitors that were looking at buying our company came in and saw that extra growth phase happening, and they wanted to partner with the business. The acquisition of Bayless Medical by Boston Scientific was a really, you know, big deal in the industry. You know, first of all, Bayless is a privately held company that was, you know, privately funded and grown. And so because of that, it was a little bit of a sleeper company and I don't think people really realize the, the value and the prevalence of this market. There's not that many, you know, billion plus dollar deals that are done in the medtech industry, but the multiple of revenue that was paid uh, was another. There's, an even shorter list of companies that, that trade at north of 10 times revenue. New medical technologies are really important. Cardiovascular disease is still the number one cause of death and a major cause of cost, morbidity and mortality in the world. If we are not developing cardiovascular technologies here in Canada, then we're really dependent on other parts of the world to help us get our parents and our family members and our friends through some very difficult times. Being a Canadian company, Frank, and I'm very proud of that. We're, we're a proud Canadian. We were educated here in Sir Waterloo. We kind of got our start here. Why we've been in Canada has really allowed for us to mature, have our manufacturing where our engineering was, and that was critical to the development of our products. There aren't a lot of Canadian-based medical device companies where operations, strategy, marketing, leadership all emanate from within Canada. They did things that most Canadian entrepreneurs would not do. They created a full service company with real revenues. So it's a great success story for Canadians. In the medtech space, you know, the, the fact that they did this on their own without any venture money or any external investor is almost never heard of. It's not just special in Canada, it's special all over the world.